Hi, Greg Kamishek with Bio Research. What we're going to be doing now is going through the joint vibration analysis review uh, capability using the flowchart. And we just looked at my JVA trace, where I have nice, normal, functioning temporomandibular joints, quiet, no vibrations. And now what we're going to do is take a look at the screening uh, of a JVA trace where we do have vibrations. Now, what I've done is I've already opened this trace, and if I blow it up full screen, I'm going to unmark everything so we can see exactly what this trace looks like. You notice here as the patient opens and closes, the green line is open and up is close. As this patient opens, we have a vibration in the right side and a vibration in the left side about three-quarters, two-thirds of the way down the slope of maximum opening. Then, upon closure, about three-quarters of the way closed, we have a click in the right and a vibration in the left. Then, at the peak of the waveform, we have the tooth contact, teeth tapping right, teeth tapping left. As this patient opens and closes, we have our opening right and left clicks, reciprocal closing right and left clicks, and tooth contact. Third opening, right left click, closing right left click, and tooth contact. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to compare this trace with a normal joint vibration analysis trace, this one. Again, just like we saw in the previous video, we have open, close, open, close. Every time we have close, we have our tooth contacts, but nothing in between, and this patient has a normal range of motion of 52 millimeters. So, let's take a look at the one where we, the patient does have joint vibrations. Most people would agree that pops, clicks, vibrations in the temporal mandibular joint is not perfectly normal. So what we know right now is, compared to the silent and normal range of motion, this patient has pops or clicks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the flow chart and how we classify uh, these vibrations. What we do is we take our vertical cursor here, and we can right-left drag it with our mouse and put it right over the vibrations we want to look at, the ones we want to measure. That, anywhere that this vertical cursor is placed is blown up in the lower left hand window. We can see the vibration from the right and the vibration from the left. Notice how the profiles, how the waveforms look different. Joint vibration analysis records the actual pressure wave as it travels through the tissue. So we can get an idea of frequency and amplitude just by looking here. But what's really uh, helpful is if we mark it then we get the numeric measurement of the vibration. Again, total integral, energy below 300 hertz, energy above 300 hertz, and then down here at the bottom, the patient's maximum opening of 50 millimeters. Now, what I'm going to do is take my vertical cursor, because I've marked the opening click, both here on the right and here on the left, remember this window is blown up down here, I'm going to scroll through, looking in this window, watching the zoom view, the jaw is fully open, and now it is closing, and upon closure, there's another vibration, and then tooth contact. I'm going to ignore those two for right now. Now the patient is opening, and there is that opening joint vibration a second time. I'm going to mark it by clicking on the green X. What I'm going to do is just move this over a little bit here, mark it, and you'll notice in the superimposed vibration window how the first window in magenta, the second window in green, here in magenta and green we have each joint vibration drawn. And you'll see how similar they are. It's because the same thing is happening over and over again. I'm going to mark that again. And in fact, window 2 and window 3 almost perfectly superimpose here in the superimposed vibrations. Now what we're going to do is take a look at our numbers and run through the flow chart. The total integral for the left joint is 28 newtons per square meter. The total integral for the right joint, or amplitude, is 47.2 newtons per square meter. When we look at our flow chart, what we can see is that both 28 and 47 fit very clearly, very easily, between 20 and 80. The patient's range of motion was 50, so the second question, maximum opening, fits between 40 and 70. Now we come to the question, how much energy above 300 hertz? Is it between 0 and 3 newtons per square meter or greater than 3? Looking at our numerics, the energy above 300 hertz is 2.3 for the left and 21.4 for the right. So quite a bit more of that high frequency energy here on that right joint vibration. Looking at our flow chart, in the 20s, goes over here to the right, 
between 0 and 3 goes down to the left. So our left joint actually goes right down here to the ligament laxity partial disc displacement with reduction or Piper stage 3A area. We also have some waveform examples to see is that what the waveform looks like. We go back to the biopack, looking at the review mode, and this vibration here on the left does actually look quite a bit like that vibration there on our sample. Now, in looking at the total integral on the right with the energy greater than 300 hertz, if we go through our flow chart, that will bring us down here to advanced DJD, a potential perforation, or a Piper stage 5A. Keep in mind, again, the flow chart, joint vibration analysis does not constitute a complete diagnosis. You still need to do a thorough history. You still need to do your clinical examination. We don't want to you to replace radiography or anything else. Joint vibration analysis is simply a method of objectively recording the vibrations that occur in the temporomandibular joint. And by recording them objectively, by their amplitude, by their duration, by their frequency, we can effectively categorize them and then compare them to a post-treatment. Thank you very much for your time, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to give us a call. 1-800-251-2315, or check out our website, www.bioresearchinc.com. Thank you very much and have a great day.